Hey friends, you are crafting with Kim Byers at the Celebration Shop and today we are going to make something really fun with infusible ink. Cricut Infusible Ink. So if you've not used Infusible Ink before, um, I will walk you from A to Z so you know exactly how to use it. Um, but this, if you've used it before, this would be a really fun project for you to make. So if you are uh, someone who loves to be sustainable, these are gonna be like grocery totes um, that you can take to uh, the grocery store to get your groceries. You know, you could use this same technique to do any kind of tote. Um, but the other thing is, is if you um, are a giver and you would like to do something nice for your local food bank, this is actually a great way to um, give um, to someone who is struggling. Um, so what we're gonna do is I put our, created this, a couple little food puns in Cricut Design Space. So we're gonna put those on totes and then we're gonna fill them full of food and take them down to the local food bank. Uh, it was brought to my attention that people who come to the food bank, you know, they're struggling. Um, and obviously it's hard to ask for help. And so um, a lot of times these people are given food um, in like cardboard boxes and things like that, which is one cumbersome to carry um, if you're walking home. And a lot of these individuals do, you know, walk to the food bank and walk home. Um, so these totes would be um, hopefully one uplifting and two much easier for them to carry and bring back and forth um, to the food bank. And, and they wouldn't be embarrassed because, you know, people would realize that they were getting the food from the food bank um, if they're coming back with the cardboard boxes. Um, so it's just something to lift their spirits and to be giving and loving and helpful to those who are struggling right now. Um, so let's hop over to Cricut Design Space. I'll show you what we're doing and then we'll hit the craft table and I'll show you all about Infusible Ink. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and I've just started a new canvas and I went into images um, and just browsed around for, um, you know, different types of foods. And I came across some donuts and I came across um, this avocado. And so I just worked up a, a silly pun to go with them. Um, but you could go into Cricut Access and get any vegetable, fruit, whatever you wanted to do and um, come up with something fun to say about those. So eat more whole foods. <laughs> I love a donut, right? Um, and then holy guacamole, let's eat. So I think we're gonna start with the holy guacamole, let's eat. Um, and so I'm actually just going to uh, take these guys and hide them for now. Um, but I, one of the things that I went ahead and did is if you grab the entire design, um, and you can see right here too, if you wanted to um, you know, use some of these same things, same elements, but different vegetables. This is DJ Flirt, um, which is a font in Cricut Design Space. And then this one is Be Free um, in Cricut Design Space. Okay, so you just grab the entire design and you can see that it's 7.6 um, by nine. And the totes, because we're using the Cricut Infusible Ink totes, um, they are, I believe, 18 by 13 and so this design will fit very nicely um, within the front of the bag Okay, so let's go ahead and hide one of our designs um, because I just want to work with one at a time right now uh, hide Those and hide our donut. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and make it Now, something to um, think about on this, um, and actually I let this happen because I wanted you to see this, when these things are not attached, so like when I just typed in the, the language but I didn't attach them, so if you're creating your own thing, it kind of comes in like this. Nothing's in the right place. Um, so what we want to do is we want to hit cancel. And what I want to do is I want to take guacamole and let's eat and we're going to attach both of those. So we go down to attach. Now, if you um, don't want to try to you know, space things out um, on the actual tote, you could also attach wholly um, and the other item that is this color, but I like to save as much material as possible. So I am just going to, um, wholly's already you know, one cut. And then this interior element here is one cut. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and put it back to make it. And so if we look here, so guacamole and let's eat is 
together. And then this item here, which you can move around if you wanted to. So like if you wanted to move Holy up here and you wanted to move your avocado and just again, save more space on your sheet, you could do that. Now, one thing you need to remember is when you're doing infusible ink, you must mirror. Think about it just like you would with an iron-on. Now, when you mirror this, these things could shift a little bit, so we may have to move them again. Oh, stayed pretty good. Okay, so I might shift that over just a smidge. Okay, so we can go ahead and cut this one, but make sure that you also mirror your wings, okay? So let's go back down and we'll hit continue and um, go back to the craft table and get the um, infusible ink out and get it onto our mat. Okay, so here we are on the craft table and I have a few things um, here to show you. So this is the Cricut infusible ink tote. So the packaging looks like this. Um, but these are really soft, like nice um, totes, and they absorb the ink for infusible um, for the infusible ink product. They absorb it really well, and it'll help make them like super vibrant. So I have a couple of different um, infusible ink products on the table. So this is a bright green. Um, this is like a distressed. Um, it's called Distressed Grassland, so it's got several different patterns inside of it. And then I was thinking about using this, it's like a watercolor splash is what it's called, for the donut when I do the donut one. The other thing is this is a green mat. Um, I have, this is infusible ink heat resistant tape. So you have to, and I'll show you this as we go, but you tape down um, your infusible ink and when you do that, um, you want to make sure that you're using this tape because if you use scotch tape or something like that, the residue from the tape will come off on your material and that will be very, very bad. And then I also have my uh, Cricut Easy Press 2. Um, it gets up to 400 degrees. There is a guide, which I'll link down below, um, for you to be able to, if you have the Easy Press 1 or like the original Easy Press, you can still do infusible ink, but you just need to look at the guide to make sure that you're doing all the right things. Oh, and the other thing I have is just a roller um, to get lint off of my tote. You always want to do that because um, little pieces of lint that you can't see that an ink will adhere to it and it could mess up your design. So just make sure that you always roll um, any fabric even straight out of the packaging. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's push these to the side and we're just gonna take our tote and just going to make sure we get off all of the lint that might have been on it, whoops, um, in the packaging. Just do that really well. So like there's one right there that even my lint roller wasn't getting off. You know, might as well flip it over. Do the other side as well. Um, so a couple of things too is we're going to uh, use a piece of white cardstock just to slip down inside of our tote when we are, um, look at all that, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but all the little lint pieces that was on that. Um, but we are going to slip it down inside so that we don't have any ink transfer, maybe, you know, going between, um, from front to back. Okay, so I think we are ready to put that aside and break out our infusible ink. Okay, so we have a bright green and then again this distressed. And I, I got this out so that I could open up my packaging. Actually, this one I may have already opened looking at it. I think I did looking at it from a previous time. So the infusible ink is going to come inside of this black wrapping and that is to protect the color. So one thing um, to note, so like look here, before and after, so it's a, it's a duller color um, on the sheet before you um, apply heat to it. So when we're looking at these different ones you see here, so like this, I'll show you that in a second, this is in every packaging. Um, but so there are multiple colors within this, but they change. They change once applied, okay? So we are going to use this um, kind of yellowish and the light 
And so we'll take those out. I'm gonna use the yellowish kind of on the, um, on the wings, on the angel wings. So we'll take these two and I will put those back into the black uh, material just to keep the color. This is butcher block paper. So basically you're going to use this between your easy press and your design so that there's no ink transfer um, and you just want to be able to protect your machine um, and protect uh, your material. Okay, so let's go ahead and we will cut this down to size. Um, once it was on the um, design space you probably saw when it went to mat that it was only I think like 4 by 12 so we'll go back and check that to make sure that we are cutting it the right um, size but I love to save materials so I want to make sure that I'm not wasting anything and I'm cutting this to um, the right size okay so I checked and I was right it's four and a half it's a little over four so we're just gonna go four and a half to be on the safe side so I have out my paper trimmer and I'm going to take my color and I'm going to cut it to four and a half. I love this trimmer because it keeps me from ever messing up my material. Um, I can always salvage or save as much as I want. Okay, so four and a half by 12. And then the rest of that transfer sheet I can save. And so we'll go ahead and put this on the mat. Now be careful with infusible ink because this is ink, right? So I wouldn't use a scraping tool or anything, or if I did, I would be very gentle. Um, I would just do it with your hands if you can and put it onto your mat and let's take it over to the machine and cut it. Remember, you mirrored this um, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so our first cut is done. One thing to always do is to remove your material um, or remove the mat from the material, not the other way around. Um, you want to bend the mat, not bend the material, so that you don't mess it up. So just pull it away. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our design, and with Cricut Infusible Ink, it's a little different. Um, you're going to want to sort of um, crack it if that makes any sense. So do you hear it whenever I'm doing this? It's kind of like popping um, and you're able to see the cuts and you're going to want to do it that way instead of what you would traditionally do with like an iron-on. Um, and then two, you're going to want to use the Cricut tweezers um, for this instead of uh, the weeding tool that you'll use with normal iron-on because you don't want to scratch your ink. If you scratch your ink, it could change um, your beautiful design. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of pop these and can pull away um, and use our tweezers. Okay, so at this point, you may want to um, cut away some that you've already pulled just so it doesn't get more cumbersome. The other thing you might want to do is remember that we um, put some of the, or attach some of this artwork together, and then some of it we are going to place by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and cut away the word holy and the little avocado and take those apart so that when we pull them away that they are individual elements okay so if you want to cut some of this away you can do that and then this is when the tweezers would come in if it doesn't pop right up like that one does fantastic and you feel like you need to get in there use tweezers to pull that away see instead of using a scraping tool where you might accidentally um, scratch your ink okay and then we'll just keep popping till we get all the way done okay so I've cut out um, the last of the uh, designs and so whenever you look at this like this really deep beautiful green that's what it looks like here this is before the heat is applied to it so let's just crack this one really quick and get um, get the excess off how easy that pulls away 
And then we want to take our tweezers if we need them. Nope, it's gonna come off really well and get the center piece out. So now what we wanna do is we want to place this onto our tote. And if at all possible, you want to do the entire design at one time. So I am using uh, the largest of the easy presses. Now this you could probably do with a nine by nine. I just happen to have the big one, so I'm gonna use it. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you is my little avocado guy here. I want to do these at the exact same time, but it's a one solid piece. So it's gonna be really hard for me to get this piece inside of this piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, Cricut blade, basically. This is a, a true knife. And what you're going to do is just cut out the center of this, okay? So then that way I'm gonna be able to place this one inside. So I'll trim this one out and trim out any other designs that you need to so that the materials aren't overlapping and then we'll place it all down at one time and we'll heat press it at one time. So with the easy press, um, I'm gonna be using the actual mat um, that comes with the easy press and I'm gonna be using 385 degrees for 40 seconds, and I got that off of the Easy Press Guide. So you just want to pull up the guide. I have it saved um, you know, as a quick reference, but I'll provide a link down below so you can look it up and just make sure that you're using the right temperature for the right, whether it be a t-shirt or a tote, um, or if it's uh, the um, infusible ink markers versus the infusible ink sheets. Okay, so my Cricut True Knife um, made short work of um, cutting out the center of this. I just used it on my self-healing mat and trimmed out the inner piece. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place a piece of white cardstock on the inside of my tote just so there's no ink transfer. You know what, and the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this off really quickly. I'm going to preheat my tote um, and get out these wrinkles um, for about 15 seconds. So I'm gonna take my Easy Press and press that out. I've got my cardstock on the inside. I'll put my design back in place. And then if um, necessary, I can tape down anything um, with my tape. Sometimes with the, the transfer sheets, it's tacky enough that I'm not too worried about it. But if you're using a ink pen, um, on this and so you're using the um, laser paper definitely use the tape and I might even use the tape anyway just depending on how tacky it is and then you cover it up with a piece of transfer tape did I say transfer tape I meant <laughs> butcher block okay so let's heat just going to preheat my tote about 15 seconds, get out the wrinkles so that my design sets beautifully. Okay, so we'll set that out of the way. Now, whenever you put your Easy Press down on your ink, make sure that you set it straight down, that you don't shift it around like I just did. I was just preheating the material because you don't want there to be any ghosting, which basically means that your ink smears and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to allow that to cool for a second because I don't want my ink to stick to it before I have a chance to like place it right where I want it to be. And then we will put everything where it should be and go on from that. And I might even take this opportunity just to roll it one more time, make sure there's no extra fibers. So there's nothing that's going to hinder my design. I can actually see something on it right there. Okay. Okay, so I have my white piece of cardstock on the inside. I took my clear ruler and made sure um, this tote is 18 inches by 13 and a half or so. And so I made sure that my design was centered the right way. So I also, um, some totes and t-shirts and things like this, you know, always kind of look at things like the handles to make sure that you're in the right spot because, you know, you could be centered perfectly and you could have the handles there and it doesn't look like you're centered perfectly. So just make sure that everything's where it should be. And now we're ready to use the Easy Press. One thing, um, just make sure that you do, make sure that you uh, do not overlap 
any of the backer so that the ink is then you know being pressed onto the backer of another element just you know recheck everything and make sure that there's nothing overlapping so that you don't mess up this beautiful fun design at the last minute okay so now we put our butcher block onto our design and remember with our easy press we're at 385 for 40 seconds you do not want to move it at all. You want to set it straight down onto your design, the entire design all at one time. Okay, and I'm going to put some light pressure on it. Just very light. I just don't want it to move at all. Okay, so now we are going to lift the easy press straight up no smudging or smearing okay we'll take this off and now it's time for the big reveal and this is really hot so I'm gonna let it cool just a little bit you can see that some of it's already like wanting to come up, but I'm gonna let it cool a little bit and then I think I'm gonna take my tweezers and sort of pick it up. Again, just making sure that you're careful so that um, that ink is not going to smear on you. Wow, that looks so good. And look at the material so all of the ink is gone. All the ink's gone. All the ink is now on the design. Oh wow, look how vibrant that is, guys. Isn't that beautiful? I am in love with this oh, transfer ink. So look, so you can see the pattern inside if you get really close, and I'll get the camera close in a moment, but you can see the design of the distressed design on the inside. And then this outer edge is just that solid, bright, solid green that we chose. And then the wings are also that distressed um, yellow as well. Wow, I am so excited. So just so you know, this right in here is actually part of that distressed design. It's not that the ink didn't come off and do what it was supposed to do, it did. It's just part of that design. So how cute, it turned out so good. I'm so excited. Let's get a little bit of a closer look. Okay, so now that we're closer, you can see the gradient within the uh, infusible ink. You can see the designs within the wings. Isn't that beautiful? And then this outer edge, I used a solid green and it like, it's so vibrant. Like you look at the designs, you know, on the actual sheets before you use them and you think, oh my goodness, it's not that bright. But then once you apply heat to it, it is just so pretty. Okay, so let's go ahead and move right into our second tote. And I've gone ahead and cut everything out. And this time I used Splash Pad. Um, and I used all the different colors in Splash Pad. Um, and I actually used one color from another uh, infusible ink because I wanted to use the green. And so this is the Mermaid Rainbow. Um, but you could have, I, I almost used one of the colors a second time, but I decided to, you know, open it up and, and do a second one. Although look at it, it doesn't look green, does it? <laughs> so we'll see what it comes out. Um, it's supposed to be a really pretty green color. Okay, so let's go ahead and now that everything's already weeded out, uh, the Easy Press 2 is already heated and um, we'll just go ahead and lint roll our um, tote and get it all ready and we'll press it really quickly to get out any wrinkles and we'll go ahead and place down the design and do it just like we did the holy guacamole. Okay, so for this one I actually did use the tape um, just because the donut wanted to curl 
um, each time I tried to put it down. So the word stayed in place pretty well, but again, the donut wanted to curl, so I thought it'd be a good idea to use the tape this time. Okay, and then I centered everything and made sure it was where I wanted it to be. Um, and this is a clear acrylic ruler. I use it for almost every craft that I do. Okay, so my uh, Easy Press 2 is heated to 385 uh, for 40 seconds. And remember that we want to go straight down. We don't want to move at all. So straight down. We don't want any ghosting. We want to cover the entire design all at one time. 40 seconds. Okay, we just beat. We're gonna lift straight up. Put it back down. Okay, so now we want to allow this to cool just a little, and then once it's cooled, we're gonna use our tweezers to peel it up. You can already see some of the, well, you can see that the ink has left the paper. You can see it as the paper starting to like curl up and the ink is adhering to the canvas. I think this one's gonna be really cute. I'm excited. It's kind of fun with infusible ink because it's sort of like, you know what it's supposed to look like somewhat, but because these are patterns, every piece that you do is slightly different um, than the last. So let's see, and this time we have tape on it as well, so it's another reason I'm gonna let it cool just a smidge more than we let it cool last time. Okay, so let's start lifting this up and see what we got. Wow, isn't that beautiful? It's so vibrant. And as, as you can see, once more, all the ink came off of the uh, infusible ink sheet and onto the fabric. And see the tape pulled. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. Look how beautiful that is and vibrant. Now it did leave a little bit of the ink on um, the sheet this time, but that's okay because I think it came out gorgeous and the colors are just so bold. I am in love with this infusible ink. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that craft as much as I did. And if you are making some totes for yourself or if you're doing some for your local food bank, I would love to see what you whipped up. So tag me on social. And I would also love for you to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you next time.